What's up guys, it's Chris, you're watching Plumbing Explained, and today we're going to change out a drippy hose bib. Now imagine a leak dripping at that rate all day long, how much water you're going to save by just changing out this drippy old hose bib. So this is a sweat hose bib, meaning it's soldered into that T there. So in order to be able to heat that T up to the point where we can break that solder joint and pull that old hose bib out, we're gonna crack the joint here, the um, union, and allow the, that'll allow the water a place to escape instead of building up in the T that we're gonna be heating up there. So I'll also pull the packing here to uh, give the water a little bit of ventilation down so it'll just keep moving down into the T and dribbling out over the pressure regulator. Another thing I like to do is I like to take a hacksaw and cut just behind the hose bibs where the handle housing would be, uh, leaving just enough of the old hose bib there for me to grab with a pair of channel locks so that I can sweat that old hose bib out or what's left of it. <laughs> we're gonna sweat that little brass piece out. So we're gonna be heating up that half inch section of T, or sorry, three quarter inch section of T. This is a three quarter by one inch by one inch T there. And uh, we're gonna be heating up the three quarter inch section and just sweating out what's left of that hose bit. So we're gonna clean it up real nice with, a with some sand cloth. And I'm actually gonna use another little trick that I just learned recently. Another plumber told me this, uh, and I wanted to see if it worked. And it's using some PVC primer to remove the paint from the copper pipe. And let's see how good this works here. I'm putting on my rubber gloves because you don't want that PVC primer getting on your hands. I mean, especially if you've got cuts, man, it's like torture. I mean, I honestly don't know which one's worse, PVC primer or flux getting in your cuts, but they are both absolutely terrible. <laughs> Comment down below if you've had flux or PVC primer get into one of the little cuts on your hand, especially if it's like slightly infected. Oh man, you are not gonna be a heavy camper. Customer's paying double now. <laughs> Now, if you have the purple PVC primer like I do, you want to be very careful where you get that stuff. Make sure the lid is screwed on tight. I've, there's been too many times where I've been working with guys that'll knock it over or drip it everywhere, and that stuff's crazy hard to get out of stuff, except for I learned another trick recently that uh, if you get it on concrete, you can put clear PVC glue down over it and then it'll peel right up, supposedly. I haven't had to use that trick yet, but if I do, I will make a video of it to show you guys. And if any of you guys have used that trick, comment down below and let me know if it works because that's what some guys were telling me recently. Um, I, I saw some stuff on a forum that I follow where the, uh, some guy, his uh, apprentice had dripped uh, purple primer all over the place and guys were telling them that the uh, clear PVC glue will peel it right up which is really cool man I wish I would have known that in the past okay so uh, the jury's still out on this primer stuff uh, it looked like it helped a little bit clean up the paint a little bit but uh, I still wound up using some sand cloth to make sure that the uh, joint was real nice and clean I like to make sure before I solder anything or heat anything up that it's really nice and clean. Number one, I don't want to be inhaling the fumes from that heated up and melting paint. And I don't want to be uh, not properly heating the joint. And sometimes if the, the outside of the pipe isn't properly cleaned, the joint won't heat evenly. So it's really important. I mean, to get it out, I, I could, get, I could have uh, heated it up to get it out without having to clean it up. But again, I didn't want to uh, inhale, sit and inhale all that uh, paint. You know, being a cancer survivor, man, I think about a lot of things differently now. Uh, I, I used to be really reckless in how I approached and did things, and I really have uh, tried to be. I try to be now a lot more, uh, you know, vigilant when it comes to like inhaling toxic fumes or putting. To, you know, oh, back in the day, I would have just thrown that primer on. I wouldn't have even had gloves on. That stuff probably gets right into your bloodstream if it gets on your hands, which, I mean, look, that would have been all over my hands, so I've just, you know, you live and you learn, and I've gotten older, I'm 34 now, and, uh, <clears throat> you know, I'm trying to be an old man one day for my boys, so, 
not inhaling paint might help me. It might not, but uh, in my opinion, it doesn't hurt just to be a little bit more cautious. So I'm using an open mesh sand cloth. I've used both types of sand cloth, and I'll tell you right now, the open mesh is definitely better. It will last longer. You can use it when it's wet, and uh, yeah, it'll last a really long time. You get a lot of a lot of sanding out of one little piece of open mesh sand cloth. Um, I'm gonna continue wearing rubber gloves in this video. I, I like to wear rubber gloves when I'm soldering um, because I a you're dealing with flux and stuff like that, and b uh, I, I think the oils from your hands can honestly compromise joints sometimes. Uh, so it's good to be really careful if you can be. So to make sure I don't compromise those other joints on this tee, I wet down some rags and I wrap them around the joint. This will really help prevent those joints from heating up and being compromised from because I'm going to have to sweat this brass piece out of the copper right now. And uh, if at times I've had this in the past, if it gets too hot, it will compromise one of those other joints. So I like to get the rags wet and then wrap them tightly around the joint. And that, like I said, should absorb most of the heat and uh, prevent those joints from heating up and being compromised. Now watch as I sweat this brass remnant of that hose bib out of this tee. I'm going to heat the bottom of the joint up first, because remember, this is a three quarter inch joint. So I'm gonna heat the bottom up first. Gonna let the heat kinda, the flame kinda wrap its way around the joint there. And then after that's heated, cause heat rises, I'm gonna turn the uh, torch up and start heating the top of the joint flame went out there I got to reignite it because I've got one of those beautiful self-igniting goss torches so then I take my channel locks and I put pressure on the fitting like I'm trying to screw it outward and I, I put a little pull put a little bit of pulling pressure on it as well and then I scoot it outward counterclockwise while kind of pulling towards me and I like to take the flame off of the uh, fitting and only reapply it every few seconds. I don't like to keep constant flame on the fitting because you can compromise the fitting doing things that way. So you just kind of, you want to make sure that the solder stays heated and then immediately come in with your wire brush and hit that joint so that you can hopefully clean up as much of the inside of that joint as possible. And in this case, I'm going to be trying to use a uh, three quarter, uh, fitting by a uh, three-quarter FIP copper fitting I'm going to be sweating in there that way my customer in the future will easily be able to change this hose bib out himself or it'll be easier for me next time he calls me and he'll save a little bit of money have I earned a subscription from you yet I really hope so if you're not subscribed make sure that you go down subscribe leave a like leave a comment I'd really appreciate it if you guys gave me some ideas for future videos. I've got the Unclog series that I'm working on, and I've got some other series that are going to be coming out soon. And as you know, I've been having some complications with my editing software and uh, transferring my videos back and forth to my editing software. And I'm really hoping I can have those bugs worked out soon for you. But until then, most of the videos are going to be being shot on my iPhone. So I'm sorry if the quality isn't as good as I would like it to be or you would like it to be, but I really hope that that will be changing soon, guys. I'm going to be shooting with a couple different cameras soon so that we will have multiple angles in the videos and it's just going to be hopefully a lot better production value for you guys, the viewer. So here I'm cleaning the outside of this fitting because that is a three quarter by fitting uh, FIP there. So that means the fitting actually sits inside of another fitting. So it's not exactly a three quarter fitting. It's the outer diameter of a three quarter inch pipe, which is really uh, cool for this situation here because you don't want to have something sticking out too far. It'll catch on stuff. And that's exactly why I'm taking my little file here and I'm going to file the inside. There's like a little ridge of solder that uh, I couldn't get to um, file down with the wire brush properly. So I, I carry these little mini files that I bought at Harbor Freight 
and I use those to file down any anything like this that way that fitting will sit down all the way inside of this cup here instead of just three quarters of the way like it would have had I not filed that piece that little rim down just now and even though that doesn't sound like a lot it really means a lot for a fitting like this to be seated all the way in this is right here at the be the front of the home right after the pressure reg regulator so there's always going to be a lot of pressure on this fitting here and even just that little bit of space you'd notice if it if it was sticking out real far and because we're using a three-quarter fip by three-quarter mip hose bib it is gonna be sticking out a little bit further, actually a lot further than it would had I just used a regular sweat hose bib. Every little bit of space counts, especially when it's right in the front of the customer's home. So there you see, the fitting now fits all the way in. It seats perfectly. Now we're gonna hit it with our Everflux. I like to flux both the fitting and the pipe. Um, some guys only do one or the other, but I always like to do both. I flux everything and anything. So I'm going to take my chance and make sure that that fitting sits all the way up in there, all nice and tight there. My biggest and only regret of this video was using these channel locks. I should have used my nip -X. That's what I normally always use on the job. It just so happened these were hanging out of my bag. I picked them up and decided to use them. Here we go. I like to use Sterling solder. What do you guys use? I like to start heating the joint from the bottom. And then once I've heated the joint from the bottom for a minute, I'll move my flame up top. And both ways, I always make sure that the flame is wrapping around the fitting. That way the entire fitting, the entire cup is getting heated. And there we go, that's a perfect joint. Next, I'll take my jersey gloves and I'll wipe the joint down with the jersey gloves just to clean up any excess solder. And then I'll take my flux brush after the joint is cooled for a few seconds and clean the rest up. And then after that, I'll likely sand the area and wipe it all down again to make sure there's no leftover flux that's gonna eat through the pipe uh, later on after I leave. So where do you guys stand on slick tight versus Teflon? Like in this situation here, I'm going to use slick tight instead of Teflon tape. The slick tight is basically a uh, paste version of Teflon tape and it's going to seal the threads just like Teflon tape would have. Except after I thread this in here and it's nice and tight, I'll be able to clean the slick tight up and you'll never even see it. So um, it's going to look just like brass on copper, but it'll still be watertight. Isn't that beautiful? And man, I love this Milwaukee pipe wrench. It's like an extra long, small uh, aluminum pipe wrench, and it's just awesome. It comes in clutch all the time. As a service guy, service and repair guy, you need one of these on your truck, for sure. It allows you to get the leverage you need in some jobs that you just wouldn't be able to get otherwise. And it's just such a clutch tool, man. It's it's one of my favorite tools I've bought in the last few years. So now I'll go ahead and tighten that union back up. And I'll use the pipe wrench again because that pipe wrench really allows me to get real good leverage and uh i just love that pipe wrench i couldn't say enough good things about it honestly i feel like a milwaukee salesman at this point So I like to use the edge of the rag to kind of clean out the slick tight out of the uh, threads there on that MIP hose bib. And I wipe off my joint one last time just to make sure there's no leftover flux or anything like that. Gosh, what a beautiful looking job well done there. Anyways guys, hope you take care and I'll see you on the next one. You can see why I wanted the Nipex there.